Tuka Joe here, and tonight we have a very challenging situation. My neighbor's uh, generator apparently broke down, so there's no lights from the extension cord. But we received our LED panel, which can use batteries. We have uh, six AA batteries. So here we go with turn number three of N, the Napoleonic Wars. Let's place the camera on the hole. So this is the situation at the beginning of turn three. Now, uh, remember in this game, to advance the abdication level, which is what we want to do by one, we have to control the boot nation and two more nations. And the boot nation in the turn that you just saw was Germany. But now we're moving to turn three, and the boot nation will be Italy. In Italy, we have the Pope that helps us uh, in the matter of light infantry, and the two French diplomats are in Germany. So there's a good chance we can control the boot nation this turn, and we have to control two more in order to advance that abdication level in Spain. Looks like a good candidate for us because we have already there nine strength points in Dutch units. The other nation we should be able to control is Austria. So let's see if we can advance that abdication marker. Let's proceed now to turn three. And we go to the high politics phase. First, we get money and put it into the Treasury. The Continental System event is not in play this turn either. So we get four pounds for London, one for Ireland, one for Haiti. We lost the pound marker for the Cape of Good Hope, and that's permanent, even if we can uh, successfully send a diplomat there and... Uh, conduct a charm offensive and one each for Mysore and Egypt that gives us eight pounds plus two because Austria is in the coalition for ten so we increase our treasury from six pounds to sixteen pounds which is the maximum now we can transfer pounds to the minor war fund or admiralty budgets we see that the French control the high seas, and uh, that's not good. So we must transfer some uh, considerable funds to the Admiralty budget. We will add four pounds to the Admiralty budget, reducing the Treasury to 12. Now we want to add some funds to the Minor War Fund. And uh, assuming the worst in this particular turn, we will have two Minor Wars. So let's add a total of six pounds to the minor war fund and that will reduce our treasury also to six. Now we designate the Bu Nation. And as we stated before, the Bu Nation, this turn is Italy. And we place the Bu marker there. Now we perform the printed events for this turn. We got two events, Spithead and the Nor and Second Coalition. Spithead and the Nor reads, the Royal Navy sailors mutiny over pay. Add Senegal and one random Eta to the high politics cup. So we add the minor war chit of Senegal and the next face down Eta marker to the High Politics Cup. Now to the next printed event, Second Coalition. And this event reads as follows. Russia abandons its historic neutrality. Discard the Russian nobility blocking scroll. So we discard the Russian nobility blocking scroll and place it with the other discarded markers in this game. Next, we draw and play zero, one, two, or three high politics chits. As indicated there by the circle, we draw two. We draw the first high politics chit, and it is a French Eta client. 
And let's see where the French set up this puppet client. We roll 1d6, and the roll is a 3. The 3 corresponds to Austria. So now uh, the French will be able to bring more light infantry in any battle there in Austria. Now we draw the second chit from the High Politics Cup. And it reads, no war. We place the chits with the other discarded chits, and we a lot allocated a lot of uh, money to the minor war fund and no minor wars this turn. So now we have the option of buying one additional high politics chit. Now, why may it be a good idea? Because it has an increased chance of drawing a minor war, and we have a lot of funds. We have uh, six pounds in the minor war fund. Uh, which are going to sit there idle unless we uh, try to use them. However, we have also six pounds in the treasury, so if we use three, we only have three left. And with three, we cannot send our four diplomats out to try to get those pesky French diplomats out of the nations where they are. So we will not buy an additional high politics chit on to the diplomacy phase, and we roll two dice to place two French diplomats in random nations. Okay, the first diplomat to be placed, we roll 1d6, and the roll is a six. It goes to the Butte Nation. The Butte Nation is Italy, so there goes the French diplomat. And remember that each one of those diplomats attracts a French corps later on. So now we roll for the second diplomat, and the roll is a one. The second diplomat is placed in France. So the counter diplomacy phase. And we debate French diplomats, and each one of our diplomats that we send costs us one pound. And we continue now. We have lights from the extension cord. So, how many diplomats do we send to what nations? We know that because Italy is the boot nation, the French are going to send at least four corps there. So, uh, Italy is going to be strengthened. But, of course, we have to take it because it is the boot nation in order to advance the uh, abdication level. So, there's no uh, running away from that fact. So at the least, we could send one diplomat to Italy, then one to Spain, and then two to Germany, since there's no diplomats, French diplomats in Austria. Of course, the diplomats in Germany are going to be the hardest ones to uh, remove, because they are the French named diplomats. And we have the added situation that in France, because of our friends, the royalists here, there will be a battle here and probably a pursuit, meaning that the big French army here in France will probably pursue our forces into Italy or Germany. But in any event, we will use our four diplomats now and uh, let's spend now four pounds. And our treasury is now at two. And we place Metternich in Italy to square off against the French diplomat there. Metternich is one of our best, and we really need to remove that diplomat from Italy, the Bu nation. Next, we send Castlereagh, our also top diplomat with Metternich, to Germany, and he'll be squaring off there against Talleyrand. Rasumovsky also to Germany to debate against Reinhardt. Finally, Hardenberg. Now, Hardenberg could go to Spain to debate uh, against the uh, unnamed diplomat there or to Italy as an insurance uh, to debate against the sole diplomat there. We will take the chance, we'll send him to Spain. We hope Metternich does his job in Italy. So now we resolve the debates 
And we begin with Hardenberg. He needs three or less to win his debate against the unnamed diplomat in Spain. We roll 1d6. And the roll is a four, and he loses the debate. And he remains in Spain, so we'll see an extra French corps being deployed there by the French. Now off to Germany, and we'll resolve the debate of Razumovsky against Reinhardt. And uh, we need to roll three or less, but there's a plus one because of Reinhardt's uh, rating. So we actually need to roll two or one in order for Razumovsky to win. So we roll 1d6, and the roll is a 5, so Razumovsky fails in his attempt to dislodge Reinhardt. And now we uh, proceed to the debate between Castlereagh and Talleyrand. And Castlereagh also has to roll a 1 or a 2, because we add Talleyrand's rating to get a, a final result of 4 or less, so we roll 1d6. And the result is a 2 modified to a 4, and Castlereagh wins his debate. Talleyrand is shipped off back to the hotel. So 1 out of 2 in Germany isn't bad. And now to Italy with Metternich against the unnamed diplomat. We need 4 or less to win the debate. We roll 1d6, and the roll is a 1, so off this diplomat goes. And he returns to the hotel, and uh, we have to place Talleyrand on top because named diplomats always have presidents when placed back onto the map. Next, we remove lost minor wars. This is uh, what is called a charm offensive. We could send uh, diplomats to do so, but we used all our diplomats debating this turn, so we have none available for uh, charm offensives. So that means that the lost minor war of the Cape of Good Hope remains so. And um, remember, this has an impact uh, when it comes uh, to the time that we want to uh, sway neutral countries back into the coalition. Uh, each minor war that has been lost uh, provides a uh, unfavorable die roll modifier. So for now, the Cape of Good Hope remains a lost minor war. Now we can align neutral or surrendered countries. We see the neutral forces of Prussia and Russia. Prussia uh, surrendered in turn one and is right now in a conquered or neutral state. It can be brought back to our side, the coalition, by aligning her uh, a successful align uh, die roll. However, we cannot even attempt it because there is a French diplomat in Germany. So if we would have ha had succeeded in removing both French diplomats, we could try now an alignment die roll, but that can't happen because Reinhardt is still in Germany. So on to the Grand Armée phase, and we place four French corps randomly drawn from the French uh, Corps Cup in France. So let's draw the four French corps that are placed in France. Four infantry corps with a total strength of 18. And we place them in France. And because France is not the Butte nation, or the Paris marker is not in France, we won't be able to place any of our coalition forces there. That means that our royalist friends are on their own. Now we place four French corps in the Bu nation. So we pick four from the French Corps Cup, two cavalry and two infantry corps with a total strength of 19. And to Italy they go. And we already will have our hands full in Italy, it seems. Now we place any required diplomatic forces, that is additional corps, one per each diplomat wherever French diplomats are located. There, there is two French diplomats in France, so we pick two corps from the cup. Cavalry and an infantry corps, both with a strength of 10, which now increase total French uh, strength in France to 28. One French corps to Spain, an infantry corps with a strength of 6. 
and one corps goes to Germany. Also an infantry corps with a strength of six. And now we roll on the French invasion table to see where more additional French corps appear. So we roll 1d6 and add the current turn number, which is 3. The roll is a 6 modified to a 9. Three cores in Italy, two in Germany, and one in Austria. In Italy, three cores, one of cavalry and two of infantry, with a strength of 15 reinforce the French forces there. Total French strength in Italy, 34 strength points. Germany receives two corps from the French invasion table, two infantry corps with a strength of a nine, which now brings French total strength there to 15. And one French corps goes to Austria, an infantry corps with a strength of five. Now we move on to the coalition phase and we can purchase and deploy duchy forces. There's 10 duchy units with a total strength of 17. However, we only have two pounds left. That means we can only buy two blocks of three units. And that uh, means up to six duchy units can be purchased. And between the duchy uh, unit with a strength of three and the five units with a strength of two, those will be the units that we will be purchasing. Two blocks of three, that is six duchy units. Now we place those two blocks of duchy units onto the map. So we have a block uh, that consists of seven strength points and the other block has six strength points. The first block we will place in Italy. So we have seven strength points there. Where do we place the second block? Austria, where we have no forces for now? Or Germany, to see if we have a chance of winning there? Well, Germany it is, increasing our total strength there to 11. Now we deploy our coalition forces, namely the forces of uh, Great Britain, Spain, and Austria, with the caveat that uh, there are some limitations. The Spanish can only deploy in Spain. The British cannot deploy in Austria. And the Austrians cannot deploy in Spain. Start with uh, the no-brainers. The Spanish army can only deploy in Spain. So to Spain they go, increasing our total strength there to 17. Now we deploy the Austrian army, total strength of 15. We will place two Austrian corps with a total strength of seven in Austria. And you may ask why so few Austrian corps there. And notice that the French have a problem in Austria. They have an Etat client with a strength of X. What that means is that in that nation, the French will not roll for light infantry and we automatically will roll three dice that will be added to our total. So uh, we'll take a chance. We don't have to place a lot of strength points there to obtain a, a good differential result. We place the remaining two Austrian cores with a strength of eight in Italy, bringing our total strength there to 15. Now we place our British forces. The only limitation is they cannot be placed in Austria. And we will place them all in Italy, bringing our total strength there to 34, equal to the French strength. Of course, we have the Pope in Italy to help us uh, frustrate the light infantry recruitment for the French there. So we have some uh, healthy advantages in Spain, 17 to 6. And in Austria, because we will be rolling three dice, because there uh, will be no light infantry support uh, to France there. So in those two nations, we are fine. Italy is uh, up for grabs. In Germany, we have a slight disadvantage. But of course, 
Now comes one of the most scariest uh, parts of this game, which is uh, when we roll to deploy Napoleon and his forces to see where they show up. And we roll on the Napoleon table, 1d6, and add the current turn number, which is 3. We roll a 2 modified to a 5. Napoleon goes to Italy with 4 cores. Ouch. So Napoleon goes to Italy and uh, we have to draw the four French corps that he is bringing along. And that is four infantry corps with a strength of 20. And that increases French strength in Italy to 54. So much for our dream of capturing the Bu nation for this turn, unless some uh, fancy maneuvering happens during the combat portion of the turn. Now on to the battle phase. Let's brainstorm a little here. Uh, we don't want to resolve the battle in Italy first. We're going to get our asses kicked there with a plus 20 advantage. We want to resolve some other battle to see if we can draw away the French cavalry that is present in Italy. There's three cavalry corps there. So if we, for instance, were to resolve this battle in France first, uh, that would have a chance of drawing that cavalry away, but on the downside, this battle in France is going to be uh, a, an automatic French pursuit, meaning that those French forces are going to spill over to some other nation. So that means we're not going to resolve the battle in France first. If we, for instance, were to resolve the battle in Spain first, a battle we have a pretty good chance of winning, the reality is that some of the French cavalry corps in Italy may make it to Spain, but there's a plus one, actually a plus two, because Spain is not adjacent and there's English cavalry in Italy. So uh, of the three in Italy, maybe one makes it to Spain. In France, there is one cavalry corps. It is adjacent and there's no modification. So. I would assume that two French cavalry corps would make it to Spain, and we would probably lose that advantage that we have in strength points. Now, what if we begin with the battle in Germany, which we have very chan little chance of winning? That will draw French cavalry from France, most probably, and maybe one or two from those in Italy. Or we could begin with the battle in Austria. That will certainly uh, draw at least one or two French cavalry units. In Italy, there's no French cavalry in Germany, but we can reinforce. Uh, no, we can't. We cannot reinforce <laughs> with our British cavalry in Austria. So that would be like shooting ourselves in the foot. That is because no British units can be, uh, quote unquote, built in Austria. And that means we cannot uh, pursue our, uh, not pursue, we cannot um, react with our cavalry, British cavalry in Austria. So all the options that we see are pretty grim. So we have to choose the less grim of options. So which will it be? And we begin by resolving the battle in Spain. 17 to 6, but we have to first roll for French cavalry reaction. And we will roll for the French cavalry unit in France. It successfully moves to Spain on a 1 through 5. There's no modification. And a 5 is rolled, so the French cavalry appears in Spain and our advantage there begins to melt away. Now we have to roll for the French cavalry that is presently in Italy. And there's three French cavalry units there. Italy is not adjacent to Spain. That's a plus one. And we have British cavalry in Italy. That is a plus two. So we roll 1d6 for each of these units and we will roll for them at the same time. Now remember, uh, five or less is needed. It's a two, four, and a three modified to a four, six, and a five. So the top and bottom French cavalry units 
make it to Spain. And now the French have a slight advantage there, 21 to 17. Meanwhile, in Italy, 44 to 34. And that's the end of all cavalry reaction. So now we roll for light infantry in Spain. Spanish fervor for all this revolutionary stuff is at a pretty low eight. And at eight, we have a pretty good chance of obtaining a French advantage. That means we would roll two dice, uh, which is better than rolling one. So we roll one d6. The roll is a four, French advantage. And we roll two dice, including always the white die, to see if there is a pursuit result. So we will be rolling two d6 and subtracting the differential of four because the French have more strength points than we have. So we roll 2d6, a seven modified to a three. French glory, that means all coalition units are eliminated. So all our Spanish and Dutchy forces in Spain are eliminated and they are placed in the casualties box. Because the French won a battle in Spain, Spanish fervor increases by one to nine. So we start with a defeat in a nation that we thought we were going to win. At least it wasn't a pursuit. So those uh, French forces in Spain will stay there for now, but got to watch out for those cavalry corps. So where do we solve the next battle? The options here is like choosing death by firing squad or death by hanging. It's bad everywhere. Well, looking at it this way, the majority of the French cavalry is in Spain. That means it's in an area not adjacent to Austria or Italy or Germany. So we could choose one of those. But by choosing Austria, we may have a fair chance of winning here if we don't draw too many French cavalry units. So Austria it is. We have a slight plus two advantage, but we will be rolling three dice because of the Etai client there, which is more of a nuisance for the French than anything else. So let's see which cavalry units react. We'll start with the ones in Italy. In Italy, there's only one French cavalry unit there's a plus one modifier because we have cavalry in Italy. So we roll 1d6. Remember, on a five or less, the French cavalry will appear in Austria. A five modified to a six, so there's still hope. That French cavalry stays with Napoleon in Italy. Now we check for the French cavalry in Spain. And it's three units there not adjacent to Austria, that's a plus one, and uh, no other modifiers. So we roll 1d6 for each one at once. A two, four, and three modified to three, five, and three. All three make it to Austria. And that really hurts. Now it's 20 to seven. And we cannot react with our British cavalry in Austria. So now we determine light infantry, but because of this ETA client that has a strength of X, uh, the French receive no light infantry. So we roll three dice, which uh, we have to subtract the difference. So we subtract 13 from the dice total. So here we go, we roll three D6. And the roll is a 14 minus 13 one another french glory result all coalition forces eliminated so we eliminate all of our forces in austria they go to the casualties box austrian fervor increases to 10. now we choose where else we want to take a beating germany france or italy I think I'll solve the battle in Italy with Napoleon last because every time Napoleon wins, uh, fervor increases by five when he is the young Napoleon. So 
we don't want him to win a lot of battles. And if we resolve one now and it's a pursuit, he'll be moving into another nation and then kicking our ass again. So let's solve the battle now in Germany. And we start with cavalry reaction. We have a differential there of minus four. In Austria, the French have three cavalry units adjacent to Germany, so there's no modification, only on sixes will they not react and not move to Germany. So we roll now for cavalry reaction. And of course, all three make it to Germany. Increases overall French strength there to 30. Now we have to roll for the cavalry, French cavalry in Italy. See if it makes it. There's only one French cavalry unit in Italy, and it'll roll with a plus two die roll modifier. Five modified to a seven, so it doesn't make it to Germany. So now we roll for light infantry. In Germany, there's no modification. German fervor is at uh, the highest level, 16. So we roll 1d6. A one French domination. We only roll one die. So we roll the white die, and this smells like a possible pursuit all over the place if the result is a roll of one or two. So we roll one die, subtract the difference, which is minus 19. So the result, final result is going to be less than zero, French pursuit. But the pursuit, that is the French forces moving to another nation, will only occur if the white die is a one or two. So we roll 1d6. And fortunately for us, a six, a pursuit, meaning that we retreat those forces in Germany somewhere else, but the French stay in Germany. And we retreat those forces to Austria, which is uh, adjacent. And that will cause a battle in Austria. And this uh, battle in Germany would raise the German fervor, but it, it is at, at its maximum level of 16. So it stays there. Now we resolve the battle in Austria, where we have a slight advantage for now, until all that uh, French cavalry shows up to ruin the day. So we roll first for the French cavalry in Italy. There's a plus one because we have our British cavalry there. Six modified to a seven. Uh, that French cavalry stays put in Italy. Now we have to roll for the three French cavalry units that are in Germany. The bad news is that there's no modification. So uh, only on rolls of sixes, they won't show up. So we roll one die for each. A three, a two, and a six, so the first two show up and are moved to Austria. That increases overall French strength in Austria to 15. So the French have a plus four advantage, which is not a lot. And because of that at that client, uh, we will be rolling three dice. So we, we really have to obtain a net result of 10 or more to... Uh, to see if we have a chance of eventually winning a fight there. So we roll three d6 and we subtract four. And we roll 14, minus four, 10. And the result is a 10, cavalry refight. We modify the starting forces based on the presence of cavalry and then refight the battle. Uh, this is bad for us because we don't have any cavalry. French have two cavalry units. Each cavalry unit in the battle eliminates one infantry unit of the other side, and it has to be equal or of lesser value than the cavalry unit. So the French cavalry unit with a strength of six eliminates one of our units with equal value or lesser value, and we have to always take the highest one available. We don't have any units with a strength of six, so it will eliminate our three strength emigre unit. And that unit is placed in the counter tray. It doesn't go to the casualties box. And the four strength French unit eliminates another unit of equal strength or the highest available. We don't have any four strength units. All have strengths of two. So we'll eliminate the other emigre unit 
which also goes to the counter tray, and that reduces our total strength there to six. And now we refight the battle all over again, and we check to see if any other cavalry from other nations, uh, French cavalry, joins in. So we check to see if the French cavalry in Germany joins. There's no modification. A one, yes, it reacts and shows up in Austria. Now the French strength there is 20. Now we roll for the sole cavalry unit in Italy. There's a plus one. Again, it rolls a six modified to a seven. It stays in Italy with Napoleon. And now we roll for light infantry, but because of the uh, attack client, with a strength of X, we will not roll on the light infantry table. We'll, we have to roll three dice, but now the, the um, difference is huge. Minus 14. So we roll 3d6 and subtract 14. And the roll is a 12 minus 14 minus 2. That's a French pursuit, and the French pursuit will be complete because the white die roll is a 1. So all coalition forces retreat and the French can pursue and follow them wherever they go. And our forces can retreat to an adjacent nation. That means either Germany or Italy. And of course the French units will be following all except the weakest French unit. Now if we, we retreat our forces to Germany, the battle is gonna result in another possible pursuit on a one or two. I mean, it's gonna be an automatic loss there. If we retreat it to Italy, we add to our forces only six strength points, 40. The French had uh, about 16, so they still have a marked advantage there. And note that as of now, we have not eliminated any French units. No French units in the casualty box, so if this combat uh, phase ends soon and there's no French units in the casualty box, uh, the abdication level will be reduced by one, which is really bad. So we're gonna retreat our units in Austria to Italy. That increases our strength to 40, and now the French pursue those uh, retreating units into Italy, leaving the weakest core behind. So that increases French strength in Italy to 60. And uh, of course, we're gonna take a beating in Italy now. <laughs> Most probably the next battle, this one in Italy, will result, if we're lucky, kind of lucky, in a French pursuit, but without the French actually following us. And in that case, we would retreat into Austria and then we can beat the crap out of that sole French cavalry unit there. So let's see if that will happen. So now we proceed to resolve the battle in Italy before we have to increase Austrian fervor for the revolution by one. So now Austrian fervor is at 11. So now we proceed to resolve the battle in Italy, and Napoleon is there, so that means if they win that battle, which is huh, probably gonna happen anyway, there's gonna be a plus five to Italian fervor. Italian fervor is at 15, so even that plus five is gonna be mostly wasted because the maximum level is 16. If we start with cavalry reaction, uh, there's gonna be no cavalry reaction because the only other cavalry French core that is on the board is in Austria, and it is the one that is holding the fort there or controlling Austria for the French, so it cannot react. So next is the light infantry die roll, and we have the Pope there that gives us a plus two. We see Italian fervor at 15, that means that we roll on the 15 row, and only a six will give us French advantage, meaning we roll two dice to resolve the battle. We roll 1d6, the roll is a three French domination. One die is rolled, the white die, and on a white one or two, this is gonna be a French pursuit with the French forces uh, right after us wherever we retreat. So uh, there's a differential of minus 20, which we subtract from the die roll, 
we roll 1d6, the white die. And fortunately for us, it's a pursuit result, but the French do not follow us into the nation we're retreating into. So we retreat all our forces to an adjacent nation. Of course, we cannot retreat into France because it's not the Butte nation or, and also there's uh, the Paris markers not there. So our only choice is to retreat into Austria. So our forces retreat into Austria where we have a very good solid advantage there. And we will now resolve that combat in Austria. But first, we have to increase Italian fervor because of the result of the battle. Fervor increases by five, but Italian fervor is at 15, so it can only go up one level to 16. And now it's our turn to kick some French butt here. We have a plus 36 differential. And uh, the uh, attack line there is the X, meaning that there's not gonna be any advantage for the French in the light infantry table, so this all paints pretty good for now. Of course, got to be aware of that pesky French cavalry, which is in Italy. There's three cores there, but there's a plus one die roll modifier because we have uh, cavalry, British cavalry in Austria, and that's the only way the British cavalry can get into Austria is by retreating because we cannot place them there voluntarily. So uh, let's roll now for cavalry reaction. Let's roll for the three cavalry corps in Italy. We roll 1d6 for each with a plus one die roll modifier. A one, a four, and a two modified to a two, five, and three. So all three French cavalry units make it to Austria. So even with all four cavalry units, we still have a marked advantage, a plus 20. And now, uh, because of the attack client, uh, the rating X there means there's going to be no light infantry die roll. We roll three dice, and we add it to our difference, so uh, there's no way we're losing this one. So we roll 3d6. The roll is a 12 modified to a 32. Coalition pursuit, all French units retreat and we may pursue with a white one or two but the white die roll was a six so we cannot actually pursue them into the uh, nation in which they are retreating into and the rules state that the french retreat to the easiest destination which is adjacent and the adjacent uh, nations are italy and germany and both are equally easy because there's no enemy units there so we have to randomly determine whether they retreat into Germany or into Italy. So we will roll 1d6, so 1 to 3 is Germany, 4 to 6 is Italy. And the result is a 1, so to Germany they go. We cannot follow them, so that's the end of that battle. Now we decrease Austrian fervor by 1. And it is now at 10. So we haven't eliminated any French units, so this is not good. And there's only one place where a battle can occur at this time. That is France, where we have no chance at all. So let's resolve the battle in France. 23 to 3. Let's check first for cavalry reaction. All French cavalry units are in Germany, which is adjacent, so there's no modification. We roll three, six, two, six. So two of the French cavalry units with strengths of four and five make it to France. Now we roll for in the light infantry table. French fervor is as high as can be at 16. And the result is a five French domination, one die roll. And if we roll a one or a two, those French units will follow the retreating royalists wherever they go. So we roll 1d6. The result is a 2 modified to a negative 30 pursuit and the royalist retreat and the French pursue them. So where do the royalists retreat to? So the royalists can retreat into Germany or Italy. If they would be British units or Spanish units, they could retreat into Spain, but they are royalists, so it has to be 
Germany or Italy, definitely we will choose Germany. And the French will pursue them, leaving the weakest unit in France. And the weakest unit here is uh, infantry with a strength of four or cavalry with a strength of four. We will leave the cavalry unit with a strength of four in France. So we would now increase French fervor, but it is at its maximum level. And now we have another battle in Germany. So we begin with possible cavalry reaction. But there will not be any because the only other cavalry unit is in France and is the sole unit controlling that nation. So we go to the light infantry table now. French fervor is at the maximum level of 16. We roll 1d6. The roll is a 5 French domination. One die will be rolled, and that means that if the white die roll is a one or a two, we're going to have another pursuit. So this combat will end in a French pursuit, but with a one or a two, the French will actually follow the retreating royalist to the nation where they retreat into. So we roll 1d6, and the roll is a six French pursuit, but the French will not actually pursue the... Uh, Royalist in their retreat. The Royalists have to retreat to an adjacent nation. They can't retreat into France. So the only other nation is Austria. And as stated before, the French do not follow. And that will be the end of the battle phase. That's German fervor cannot be increased beyond 16. Now to the gentleman phase. We check for Austrian, Prussian, or Russian surrender. Well, this, this turn was a disaster in terms of military operations. The French conquered Italy, Spain, and Germany. But uh, Italy doesn't have any forces. Germany had already surrendered. And fortunately for us, we, will, we managed to salvage Austria. So Austria was not conquered. So we have no um, new conquests or French conquests to uh, worry about. Win over cultural icons. The only cultural icon on the board is Beethoven. He's in Austria, and we would win him over if uh, the French would have controlled Austria. So that doesn't happen. On to the abdication phase. We determine nation control and move the Napoleon abdicates marker if necessary. In this turn, we fail to conquer the Butte nation and two more nations, and by failing to do so, and also failing to cause any French casualties. There's no French units in the casualty box. The abdication level is decreased by one. So we move it from the one box to zero. Check for victory or defeat. We're not in turn 16 yet. Uh, victory conditions have not been triggered, not even the ones, there's some uh, instances where we can lose the game uh, on an event, specific events, but that doesn't happen either. Now we perform nation fervor modifications. We start with Austria, only coalition units are in Austria, and this decreases Austrian fervor by one. And now it's at nine. Now we check for nations where, uh, which are occupied only by French units, we have Germany, France, Italy, and Spain, and Napoleon, B-type Napoleon is in Italy. So normally we would increase Italian, German, and French fervor, but they are, they are at their maximum level. We increase Spanish fervor by one. And we would also increase by one Italian fervor because Napoleon B is there, but again, Italian fervor is at its maximum level. Well, we recall diplomats, that is, move our diplomats back to London and return Napoleon to Napoleon's bed. So our four diplomats are back in London and Napoleon back in his bed with Josephine. And note that French diplomats stay where they are. Now, there's no uh, delayed course to restore, so we skip this step. There's no French units in the casualties box, so we don't roll for permanent possible casualties. 
And now we clear the deck and return all French cores to the French cores cup and all our units to the force pool, except for uh, any duchy forces that we wish uh, them to remain in the uh, nation where they are. And the royalists, and uh, yes, the royalists would return to the counter tray. So we will now clear the decks. And the decks have been cleared. We left uh, seven strength points of uh, duchy forces in Austria. Here we see our player force pool. And all French corps are back in the French Corps Cup. The Royalists are in the counter tray. The emigres had been eliminated before and had been returned there. Now we can transfer funds from one fund to another, but no funds can leave the Admiralty budget. So we only have two pounds in our treasury. We have a minor war fund of six. So we're gonna increase the Admiralty budget by one and decrease the minor war fund by one also. And no other changes to our uh, budget or treasury will be made. Now we move on to the accidents phase. We roll for random accidents. And uh, we roll one die uh, because Napoleon has not become emperor yet, nor the old man. So we roll one d6. The roll is a four. Barbary pirates, the guillotine, secret negotiations, and yellow fever in Spain. Barbary pirates. If the Royal Navy or French fleet are in the high seas box, we flip it. So now, yes, the French fleet is in the high seas box. It is flipped to its backside and nobody rules the waves during the next turn. Now the guillotine. Old leaders are beheaded and new ones take their place in Paris, pushing their own ideas for social reform. We replace the current state religion of France with a new one always in the sequence, atheist to deist, deist to secular, secular to Catholic. Right now, it is secular. So it is now changed to Catholic. The next accident or event, secret negotiations. One of the three strength coalition diplomats, either Hardenberg or Razumovsky, we can choose, is flipped face down. And he can't be used during the next turn. So it's gonna be Hardenberg. And we place him to the side face down. However, the secret negotiations bear commercial fruit and we add three to our treasury immediately or we can restore one lost one pound coin marker to a brown box for free and we can choose. So we choose to recover the one pound trade marker uh, that we lost from the Cape of Good Hope. Note that the minor war marker is still face down, meaning that that still counts as a lost minor war, which is important when we want to bring a uh, neutral to, the, to our side, to the coalition. So uh, a charm offensive may do the trick of flipping that marker back to its front side. Next accident, yellow fever in Spain, delay both Spanish cores, and this will hurt whichever side Spain is allied with. Of course, right now, with our side, both Spanish cores are taken from the force pool. They are placed in the turn record track in the box corresponding to this turn, turn three. And these cores will return to the force pool during the next restore flipped slash delayed unit step. But remember, they return to the force pool, not to the map. So it practically means that they're going to be out for one turn. And now we advance the game turn marker to the next turn. So the game turn marker advances to turn four, 1799. And this is the last game turn sample video. One for turn three. And as you can see at the end of turn three, only Austria is under our control. We've lost control of, of uh, 
Germany and therefore Prussia was defeated and is a surrendered or neutral country. Uh, it's really hard to win these battles without Prussia there. We, our forces really got kicked around pretty hard. Um, so I can see the importance obviously of bringing back Prussia into the coalition. But to do that, you have to align Prussia and you need to roll successfully. And as long as there's one or more French diplomats in Germany, no alignment attempt can be done. So that the, the game mechanics are all intertwined. The diplomats are important to kick out French diplomats, which at the same time attract French corps into the nations. And uh, you can't use your diplomats for everything at the same time. Your diplomats can be used to remove the ill effects of losing a minor war like we lost at the Cape of Good Hope. If you don't flip that counter back to its front side with what is known as a charm offensive, and for that you have to send a diplomat. Uh, if you don't, that will act as a modifier when you make an alignment attempt to, for example, bring Germany, uh, bring Prussia back into the coalition. So a lot of uh, tough decisions to make, scant resources, the French army is really tough to beat. And uh, we saw that uh, in these battles, especially when Prussia is not around. And I think uh, for the first turn, I didn't sequence the order of the battles well, so that's something that you have to take into consideration because those uh, cavalry corps can fly all around and come to the rescue of the French almost everywhere. So this is the end of this uh, video series. I wanna thank the designer, Ben Madison, for being very helpful with his comments and pointing out some mistakes that I made. This is the first time I play this game and I'm sure that the more you play it, uh, the better you get. I mean, it's like everything. And uh, so you've seen it here. This is a game that is rich in detail and narrative. Lots of events in many forms. You have the random accidents table. You have the uh, minor wars. You have the written events, the ones that will happen uh, during each turn. So a lot, a lot of uh, rich historical uh, flavor. And uh, I hope that this uh, video series has given you an idea of what this game has to offer and also the flow of the game. So this is Stuka Joe signing off for now. Thanks for watching.